The early rankings countdowns, well, they continue today with the top 10 wide receivers. We count it down, having some good debates about the big names at the wide receiver position. Will they be on any of our fantasy teams come draft season? Make sure you like, subscribe, and enjoy the video. Hey, this is DeAndre Hopkins, wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, April 20th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Yoo-hoo! Happy to be with you. Excited to get going today. Top 10 wide receiver countdown on today's show. And um, a preview of next week's shows. We'll be getting into the early quarterback rankings and a revelation we all had this morning was that <laughs> it, I don't I don't know what to do beyond about ten of them. Oh, it just seems like there's. I know exactly what to do beyond ten of them. Just not. Don't draft them. Don't. I mean, I I, I really do believe we are getting better as an industry and uh, you know as a, as a fantasy football people of knowing who's going to be good for fantasy football purposes at the quarterback position. And we know that. So cut it off, cut it out. Make sure you get one of the good ones. Yeah, very top heavy. And then, so we'll talk about those on next Tuesday's episode. And then on Thursday, we'll have our NFL draft predictions because it's draft day. Yes, it is. So I predict that Jason will watch a Kevin Costner movie <laughs> on oh, Thursday. Lord. One of his favorites. Oh, for Winner sure. Winner of Best Picture Award. It did win the Are you talking Academy. About the, the Postman? <laughs> oh, man. No, Waterworld. <laughs> The Academy hey, Award hey, for Best I will, Picture. I will not stand for any besmirching of Waterworld. That movie's great. Uh, you you like the gills? The the gills Dude, in that movie? Come on. Are you telling me you wouldn't take them? Just, just tuck I'd them. I take some gills, man. Tuck a pair of gills behind your ears, and you can all of a sudden breathe underwater? Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> Go get that dry land. That movie was better than people thought. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but, but the expectations and the money. Remember how much money yes. it lost? Well, it was yeah. At the time, was the most expensive movie this is a, because it's awesome. This is a very dated reference, guys. I mean, <laughs> the Waterworld. Were reference? you guys super into Jane Triplehorn? Is the you know want to want to let's let's break down a little bit more gonna, Waterworld. I was going to try to translate it into the lost investment on a player. Mm, yeah, I that's hijacked like, it. That's who's the Waterworld of the NFL? Trailance. Oh boy, maybe. Oh boy! Well, Maybe we're gonna talk about Alan Robinson. News. We'll we'll talk about yeah. that in a minute. Yeah. So, uh, in lieu of a quick question, I have an announcement for everybody out there today. <laughs> what was that? that? I didn't was a know. A little bit like a funeral. I don't know what the announcement is, and oh, okay. I, I didn't know the level of horn. <laughs> that so was, was <laughs> that was the, there's a line of people with horns, and one guy accidentally played his horn <laughs> was, when just, the rest were not supposed to play. It's a warm up. Getting ready. You got you to tune that thing up. This we, is actually this is this is big horn worthy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we are in that part of the year, Jason, where we we are hunting for some new writers for the writing staff. Yep. Uh, we do this every year, and um, we don't mention it on very many shows, but. Uh, why don't you take it from here? Footclanhelp.com if you want to apply. Yeah, basically, we you know every single year we add a, a few people to our group of writers. We invite them to the team. You become part of this family, and we're looking for those people out there that uh, know our show well, love fantasy football, have some experience, have some talent, have some skill that you know you you want to prove to us that you should be part of this team, that you can help our audience get better at fantasy, that you know what you're talking about, and, and that you're a great person. So footclanhelp.com, you can apply there. I mean, Kyle. Yeah, I was going to say, Kyle is, Kyle's in the building, our editor-in-chief extraordinaire. Is there any hot tips you want to uh, mention to the applicants? Uh, two things. Make sure you have fun with the application and actually submit a writing sample. 
Okay. So that I know that you can write. Yeah, there you go. And, and so you uh, will not accept the I don't have a writing sample, but trust me, anything. Just show me you can write. Okay. Kyle was, f- for all intents and purposes, our first writer. We brought him on in this exact same process, this exact same way. Bets, long term writer. I mean, the you know, come join us. Be part of what we're doing here. I have one tip, and okay. I, I apologize if this sounds vain. Mm. Uh, I would advise you are following all of our accounts on oh, Twitter. Oh, that's true. That, that that is true. <laughs> just a little, just a little tip. We're gonna look at you on Twitter and it's like, okay, he's not following me. You're guy. saying there are some some things that you can look at to see whether somebody is actually a supporter of the show. Yeah, and knows the brand. Yep, and maybe that's one of them. And it, it even if if you're not and you're trying to pretend that you are, it's a real easy thing to do. Mm-hmm. Mike also would like you to know if you have a tattoo of his face anywhere on your body, let us know. Yes. It will factor in. Yes, it will. Uh, FootClanHelp.com. A reminder, the ultimate draft kit. Uh, If you tuned in to the third ever Dynasty podcast episode that just released yesterday, um, you heard about the Dynasty Pass, all the content in there. You can learn more at UltimateDraftKit.com. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Well, guys, speaking of Waterworld. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we're taking on water. Allen Robinson was traded. Now, I want you to listen to me oh, here. Oh, whoops I want you to listen to this trade because the Rams have unloaded Allen Robinson. The Pittsburgh Steelers said, oh, we'll take him. The Steelers receive Allen Robinson and a seventh-round pick, and the Rams receive a seventh-round pick. A slightly earlier seventh yeah. round pick. They're moving up several spots. Seventeen in that, in that exact. very last round. Seventeen in the seventh. In the seventh okay. round, seventeen spots to, uh, and the Steelers are going to only have to pay five of the fifteen million owed to Allen Robinson. So the Rams, uh-huh. I will contend, may have whiffed even bigger than yours truly, <laughs> <laughs> because they are now paying ten million dollars to not have Allen Robinson, which. Based on last and year, I would pay up to $10 million to not have him on my fantasy team. They paid, they're paying $10 million to not have Allen Robinson and move up 17 spots in the seventh round. I don't believe To get that, that guy they want. I don't believe Allen Robinson <laughs> they can, got a target. can yeah. qualify here as Waterworld because yeah. Waterworld did have some redeeming parts. Yeah, and still does. It's great. Yeah, so I, there was there's nothing good from Allen Robinson. If you're wondering, well, how's it going to go this year? <laughs> Don't um, do it. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't fall for it. Allen Robinson, guys, it's really sad. Had three touchdowns last year. It's it's really sad that Allen Robinson. This is what we talk about of of when the talent goes. It can be just catastrophic and faster than you can imagine because you have. Two years ago, or so I guess three, three years, three seasons ago, Allen Robinson wasn't he a top twelve he fantasy was top wide 12 receiver in back to back seasons at that point? He and he looked like he just an absolute target monster, really safe floor, a decent ceiling, and then the, everything just falls apart in Chicago, and all of us are going, "What in the world happened?" Maybe it's just a one off. And the Rams said, "No, it's just a one off. We're going to take Allen Robinson. We're going to give him a ton of cash to come in here and help us." get back to the Super Bowl, and it was just – and it's gone. Well, NFL teams make mistakes evaluating talent from time to time, believing – I mean, the Steelers did go get Allen Robinson. Like, they do have to pay him some money to Not play for much. them. No, I know. But they, they, they said we want him to be on the field sometimes. The 49ers also may have made a mistake of their own. Several teams inquiring about Trey Lance – uh, the belief is obviously that Brock Purdy is going to be the future starter in San Francisco. See, this one qualifies as Waterworld to me because there's a lot of sunk cost <laughs> let's into. Keep, let's keep Costner okay. only. The, yeah. the, let's you know, there's a lot of sunk cost into Trey Lance, but this isn't a complete loss here. It's not just Trey Lance didn't work out, and so we're going to trade him. It's we have Brock Purdy, who we believe should be the starter based on what he did. And we have Trey Lance. Let's go get something for him. Several teams have apparently inquired, so he could be a draft day trade and be playing for 
the Tennessee Titans. Uh, and I will throw this out because one of the uh, stronger rumors coming yeah. out of you know the whispers from the bushes is the Minnesota Vikings. And I will throw this out. It might not be Brock Purdy starting for the San Francisco 49ers. Mm -hmm. It may be Kirk Cousins because Kirk, Kirk Cousins is on the last year of his deal. Kirk Cousins is boys with Kyle Shanahan. They played together over in Washington. If there's a trade of Trey Lance up to Minnesota, just saying, it would not shock me to see Kirk come down to San Francisco. Wow. I did not I did not even think about the I, – I, I Kirk Cousins would be – Great. See, that's the, the kind of plot twist that Waterworld didn't have. <laughs> right. That would have really they, redeemed that movie. As an they, M night. They yeah. needed they needed something special at the end. Um <laughs> yeah, I honestly it was one of those things where as silly as it is, obviously if they're not trading with the Minnesota Vikings and he does move on to right. another team, you could start the season with Sam Darnold as the starting quarterback and he, weird as it is, could be the reason they're able to trade trade Lan uh Trey Lance if Brock Purdy isn't ready to go week one. And like we said, the NFL gets things wrong. <laughs> it, it is something to note. I mean, in, in dynasty leagues where you're fighting to have any depth at quarterback or emergency starters, like everybody that has a chance to start gets picked up in dynasty. And so if Sam Darnold's out there, he legitimately yeah. – like this could be the part in Trey Lance's career where they can get the most value for him if he's not part of their future. They may have to pull the trigger versus, you know – goofing around with that situation yeah um, but sam darnold is he's probably still on a lot of rosters it, uh, i would imagine but if he's sitting there on a waiver wire he's a guy he's the guy that i would stash you know in that spot 30 or what 35 on your bench and, and let the draft play out because you should know by the end of the draft if sam darnold looks like he's in for some starts all right and then looking at uh some injury notes quick ones here browns wide receiver amari cooper had surgery to repair the core muscle injury he played through last season. Uh, I I want to know real quick how you feel about Elijah Moore fitting in in Cleveland with Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples Jones. Is there is there hope there? Like in a dynasty format, specific for Elijah Moore. For, specific for Elijah Moore. I mean, Amari Cooper is uh, he was great last year. I think we would all expect him to be the best receiver they have. It's just you know he's also not extremely young at the position. Do you think that Elijah Moore could establish himself if Deshaun Watson has a little bit more in store? I, I would be surprised if he establishes himself as something special for fantasy. Uh, he, he clearly should be their primary slot receiver and have a, a role that you can get a few points here and there. But I, you know, I am more on the side that I don't believe Deshaun Watson's going to come back to uh, pre-fiasco status, and if that doesn't happen, then. It doesn't matter kind of how good Elijah Moore is in that role as a slot guy unless the quarterback is, is great. And obviously, he could get back to being great. He's still very young and has been great in the past. Yeah, that, that's kind of where I end up looking at Deshaun Watson. I know we're getting into quarterbacks on Monday, but I think he'll be just fine long term. Jalen Hurts had surgery in February to remove hardware from his ankle. It's from a 2018 surgery. This is... A minor thing he's already working out, and they just gave him infinity money. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you forget it was there. That's uh, something that they did not concern the Eagles. No, and it should not concern you. All right, any other news, notes, information? Brooksy, how you doing over there in Deucer's Alley? Doing great. Yeah, nothing, nothing new going on? Got nothing for you. You got any dynasty trades brewing? Trying to get over the hump and get that title? Uh, you, are you looking not to right fix now. It? Do you want to make a little trade? Uh, you know, how can I help? I don't know. I'm getting a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got the championship burnout of just being so close yes. so many yeah, times. Yeah, that's what you're hearing. That's, I think you just mix it all up. I'm here to help. Yeah, burn it down. Fire Brooks. sale. Burn it down. I'd like to not compete with him for one year in our division. That'd be all right with me. All right, let's get into the rankings. Wide receivers. Looking at the top 10, the wide receiver countdown begins. The Tuesday show, we did 20 through 11. And uh, here's a little stat for you out there. Over the last decade, there has been an average of 3.6 wide receivers repeating as top 10 players from the previous year. So injuries. 
they factor in, but the most in that span. So the most wide receivers to repeat from the previous year's top 10, it's five. So that's something that you need to factor into your mind a little bit where there are going to be players that emerge, players that decline, players that get injured. And then you, I think part of this is going to be the rookie performances. I mean, you obviously any rookie that climbs into the top 10 is not repeating what they did the year before. So that has to be a factor as well. At number 10, one of my favorite football players in the game, Jalen Waddle, wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins, 24 years old. We all have him ranked similarly, all a little bit lower than where he finished last year. He was actually the wide receiver seven, 1,356 yards, eight touchdowns, 117 targets. Um, went from the wide receiver 16 as a rookie to the wide receiver seven last year with Tyreek on the other side. Six most receptions ever through two years in the NFL. Everything you see on the field. And he just has elite separation, quick twitch, speed. I think everybody wants to know is the upside cap because of Tyreek. And, and I mean, I, I don't know how you can say it is if wide receiver seven was a potential outcome. No, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we saw him with Tyreek, and he was great. The I think the cap, the fear of the ceiling, to me, it has more to do with Tua and the fears over his health. Obviously, he believes he is healthy. He shared uh, recently that he considered retiring and talked to his family and decided, based on the medical advice that they received, that he should be good to go. But that would be more my fear because I think the system – that the Dolphins have in place is awesome for Waddle. And Waddle can absolutely be a one. He doesn't need Tyreek to take defenders away, but he has Tyreek taking defenders away, and he can thrive. We, If you remember his rookie season, he had a, 142 targets, so much volume, and never, ever, ever, with his amazing speed, like, broke a long play. He averaged 9.8 yards per catch, which is so low for a player with his speed. And now you have, uh, you know, Mike Daniel come over, Tyreek takes some, some uh, you know, defenders away, and he is wide open to exploit his skill set. I don't see how he's he, – to me, he's very, very, very safe. There's just – outside of injuries to him or injuries to Tua, I, I don't see how you stop him. There was a little – if you remember – um, a little bit of a road bump for the offense over the back half of the year where some of what they were doing with the interior passing game, teams started taking it away. And so schematically, it was kind of, they had unlocked something for the first half of the year, but over the back half of the year, he was only on pace for under 60 receptions. So I think that there's a, I think it does come down to Tua, not just injury, but performance. Like we haven't seen what we saw last year from Tua for very long. And if you deal with concussion, if you deal with teams defensively strategizing against you, like two had some bad games. You remember these? Yes. The interception games and like they're trying to make them throw outside the numbers. You couldn't do it. But it is a, it's a two, a story to me. And it's having, you know, he's at 10 and not five because I don't have as much confidence that his quarterback can do it every week. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty confident moving him forward with Waddle. You know, the, the consistency on our, uh, the website, he's, we have him at a B, which you, you'd like that to be a, you know, a little bit higher for for what you're going to have to invest in the draft cost, but but I I think we have him ranked pretty appropriately right now. Of you will have more ebbs and flows with him than you know of of course than someone like Tyreek, but it's like so. I guess based on our rankings, it's pretty clear. But how how confident are you in a situation like? Jalen Waddle instead of T. Higgins, where you both number two wide receivers, both very potent offenses. One, I think we'd all agree, Joe Burrow is a better quarterback than two at this point. But it, is that is that even a close decision for you guys, or just it's easily Jalen Waddle? It's not a close decision for me. It's easily Jalen Waddle, and yeah. the reason why is because of physical ability. When you have, you know, more than likely he's going to finish well, around wide receiver 10 right but when you just look at what is the best case outcome maybe Tyreek gets injured maybe uh Jalen Waddle gets more targets than we expect the physical ability of Jalen Waddle is the reason why he was drafted number six overall in the NFL draft he's a freak of nature and he's 24 years old those are the type 
of people you want to invest in in fantasy where the outlier explosion crazy wide receiver one finish like that's not in the range of outcomes for T Higgins there's no world where he could do that even as great as he is whereas Jalen Waddle really could just explode and go to another level and and just to be clear physical ability I think we all agree like Higgins is a bruiser but Waddle has this speed and this game-breaking capability you know, he was over 18 a catch. Right. And and a lot of those catches would be, you know, Tyreek style, around the line of scrimmage, and then he breaks something. I think, um, you know, Higgins is down at like 13 point something. So if you want a big play, like legitimately, it's Tyreek Light in Jalen Waddle. Um, the, the, the targets per route run is interesting to me because he's down at 21%. Tyreek's at an outrageous 31%. And it's just like if you want some context for – for 21%, that's like TJ Hawkinson, Michael Pittman, uh, just under Hollywood Browns right around that as well. So it, the fact that it's, that, that Waddle doesn't have an elite number there is interesting. How to many me. games did Tua miss, though? I'd, I'd be really curious Four. what the splits look like just in Tua games because it was a, a little messier. Yeah, I believe he missed four games, but I'm not sure how many of those games he was kind of knocked out from and, and essentially missed. You know, Tua the, the, did. Yeah. Yes, Tua. And then uh, Waddle played a couple games hurt like T. Higgins did. So. And I believe missed one game as well. So, um, yeah, it, it's interesting. I think Waddle's ceiling is so high. No, Waddle did not miss a game last year. He never missed one. But he, he came off limping a few times. I remember a, a game or two. Garrett Wilson comes in at number nine, just 22 years old. I love Garrett Wilson. Uh, I don't know if he feels the same way about me. Not, I, I not think likely. He, no, I think he. I think oh, he would. Think I he really is? do. I you really think he would, or he does? If he got he do to know me, I think he doesn't know Andy. Um, yeah. But if he, but I think he should. That's weird. I think he would like to. Uh, Garrett Wilson, honestly, is, is such a cool guy. <laughs> like if you've watched his interviews, he's he is he's great. Um. Uh, 83 for 1,104, dealing with quarterback uh, challenges, shall I say, <laughs> in New York last That's year. That's very nice of you. The ultimate draft kit will have an upside meter, a new feature this year that will help you visually analyze which players can vastly outperform kind of where they're ranked and which ones kind of don't have that upside. Garrett Wilson legitimately, to me, has wide receiver one upside. Not just top five, like actually one overall. If if Aaron Rodgers ends up in New York and Garrett Wilson gets not just targets, but the quality of targets that a competent Hall of Fame quarterback could provide, I do think that's in his range of outcomes. It's not where I'm going to have him ranked, obviously. But Garrett Wilson is uh, he's physically gifted. He's a gamer. He's a go-to receiver. He can beat you on big plays. He had the most targets of a rookie wide receiver since Anquan Bolden, and again, they were not all good targets. So the the addition of Aaron Rodgers would be uh, a pretty big deal considering last year you had the games where Zach Wilson was the quarterback. That's nine games. That is a very large sample for the season. Garrett Wilson's down at six targets a game. He's averaging you know about under 50 yards. And then the games with the combo, the hybrid of Joe Flacco and Mike White, up over 11 targets a game, 80 yards of a game of the fantasy points jumps from just under seven to over 14. So there was a, it wasn't just a, like a, a funny kind of anecdotal story of when Zach Wilson was in, it sucked because <laughs> Garrett Wilson, I mean, don't get me you, wrong. That's a fun story. Yeah, yeah, too, that, that, but, yeah. There's, there's a lot of jokes you can go with there as well, but you knew that when Zach Wilson was the quarterback, you felt like Garrett Wilson is so good. I need to play him if in my fantasy football lineup, but you know deep down in your heart it's going to end tragically because because Zach Wilson's not a good quarterback. And then when the the switch over and you had the Mike White games, you were super pumped because you know that he has a chance to be the great wide receiver that he is. Yeah, you 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 see the route running, you see him in open space once he's caught the ball down the field. It is hard for defenders to get a hold of him. He's just so fluid as an athlete. And I mean, when you're talking about uh, the difference of Literally double. Like in PPR leagues, it's seventeen point two fantasy points versus eight point eight fantasy points. It's 
you're basically That's absurd. Yeah, it's 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 not a close gap. And we know Zach Wilson's not going to be the starter here. Like, that's not in the range of outcomes, I don't believe, unless injuries happen ahead of him. Well, I mean, what? Just run quickly through, because everything says Aaron Rodgers is going to be a New York Jet. At least everything we're being told by the media. What if he's not? Like, what do the Jets do? It would be Zach Wilson then, because Mike White is gone. Uh, yeah, I mean, Mike White is gone. They went and signed. Who did they sign? Oh, they. Uh, I remember Streveler. Yeah, it'll probably be Zach Wilson. <laughs> Get it done. So I don't want to just be uh, too flowery about the situation. I mean, if the quarterback's not there, it could go downhill. The other question I would have would be like, you know, if the defense is too good, right? And this team does enough and is efficient on offense, you know, maybe the ceiling's not as high. We know how nice it is when a when a team has to play aggressively on the offensive side. Brees Hall, you love Brees Hall, Jason. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all love Brees Hall. We know that this offense could be at least well balanced, right, with the running game and the passing game. Those would be some areas that that I think keep Wilson outside of a breakout season. But you know they, that and, and Nathaniel Hackett. <laughs> I mean, otherwise, the I wish I had him in Dynasty. I know Mike does. Yeah, yeah it feels good. Yeah, he he is a playmaker. I you know he didn't catch a high percentage of his passes last year. And we we want to put that on the quarterback, but we got to be, you know, at least admitting that. We'll see if Aaron Rodgers comes in and he struggles there, then maybe that is an issue. But it wasn't an issue in college. Doesn't seem like it would be going forward. All right, let's move on. Coming in at number eight is Ceedee Lamb. Twenty four years old, finished at uh, wide receiver six last year. Great season for C.D. Lamb. 107 Mm -hmm. receptions, almost 1,400 yards, nine touchdowns. I mean, he did it all. Everything that you wanted from a wide receiver one, you got from C.D. Lamb last year. And remember the story of the season for C.D. Lamb was Dak Prescott. It was week one, right? Yeah. Week one, Dak Prescott got hurt. Well, it was was towards the end of the game. So Dak played most of week one. Right. And then missed uh, the, all the way through. He started in week seven. But I'm saying it, Dak went out, and the, in, the the injury report comes out. Dak is going to miss a whole bunch of time. And it was panic in the streets of what do you do now with CeeDee Lamb? You spent a really high draft pick on him. You know it's going to be a backup quarterback for quite some time. Cooper Rush came in, played actually pretty well. And so I'm, I'm just reminding people of the season wasn't just – Hunky dory here for CD Lamb. He had a lot of things he had to overcome, and that jump you weren't sure it was going to happen. Wide receiver twenty, wide receiver eighteen, and then skyrockets all the way to almost a top five wide receiver. So it was it was a fantastic year. There are some changes to this offense, and I'm curious how it will shake out for CD Lamb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are. Zeke is gone for now, at least. Uh, you also did not have production from the wide receiver position outside of CD Lamb. They add Brandon Cooks, a great pickup in the offseason. Michael Gallup will be healthier, another year removed from his ACL. They lost Dalton Schultz, who was a, you know, absorbed some targets, although he was hurt at times last year. We'll see if they add another body at tight end in the draft, one of the top tier, Mayor Kincaid. And then the offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore is gone. You have this Mike McCarthy, Brian Schottenheimer doom combo. The that, cr- this is the curmudgeons. I, do, I guess that's a lot, a lot of the reasons he's not going to end up on my team for his for his draft costs. Like I think you have to pay up for C.D. Lamb, and I don't think I'm willing to do it. But I mean, wide receiver eight in best ball, I don't think I'm going to do that. Yeah, I, I understand that the the Cowboys they have a good defense and they want to run the ball more. They want to rest their defense more and this could slow things down plus with Brandon Cooks there the target volume might not be exclusively his but to go back to looking at the DAC splits um you know when he got back week seven and uh, and on he was currently at that time on pace for about 1100 yards and five touchdowns it was with backup quarterback play and we were questioning whether he was truly a star or just a really good wide receiver but once Dak came back I mean his numbers were outrageously good he was on target for uh, 114 receptions 
1,468 yards, double-digit touchdowns. He was not just like, oh, he's a, he is a good receiver. He was a world-beating fantasy wide receiver, a top three type of pick statistically. So you've got to kind of compare that. Dak coming back, you know it's a good offense. I don't think that McCarthy, as much as he wants to rest his defense and, and you, lo you lose more, I, I don't think he's going to say, I want to be a bad offense. He's still going to try to go out there and score, and CeeDee Lamb is a true playmaker. So, uh, you know, I, I think where he's being drafted right now is very fair. I, I, I could see myself pulling the trigger as, as a top pick. You have over the last decade to what Jace is talking about, of, of proving that CeeDee Lamb is truly that stud. Over the last decade, wide receivers with 100-plus receptions and 1,300 or more yards. As a 23-year-old, the list is Anquan Bolden, certified stud brandon marshall certified hopkins justin jefferson and cd lamb so the that i mean that particular statistic of of uh of massive production at the age of 23 that's crazy company to be associated with it leads to very good places career-wise and i think he's as safe as anybody in this top 10 for guaranteed production because bringing in brandon cooks having gallup healthier it doesn't you know, those aren't going to replace your number one target. Number seven is Devontae Adams, 30 years old now. Jason has him the highest at five. I got him at seven right now, Mike at eight. Uh, change of quarterback for a second straight year for Devontae Adams. Jimmy G, the new man in town. For now. Last year was um, a great year, 180 targets, 100 receptions, 1,516 yards, uh, 14 touchdowns, finished at wide receiver three and has been a top three guy for four or five years. It's probably foolish to doubt Devontae Adams' production in any way, shape, and form, and we could end up a little low here. I'm, I'm curious what it'll look like when we get through our actual projections for the UDK here in June. But the downgrade at quarterback didn't matter. Scored a billion touchdowns. Did have a bunch of those weird games yes. where first half it was unbelievable, and then he's gone in the second half. They just don't go to him. But you also had a bunch of weird games where he was not doing anything. You know, week two, two for 12. This is Devontae Adams, was two for 12. Week eight uh, against the Saints, one reception for three yards and then the stretch during the fantasy football playoffs which he was the wide receiver 38 58 and 80 before if you managed to get through to the championship week uh Adams was one of those players that won the week because he was the wide receiver too but that's that's the only reason I have him just a little bit lower is it, it, like is Jimmy Garoppolo just as good Will he be just as good at Derek as Derek Carr was in this offense? I, I, I don't know. It's a it's a variable that has it can, that should cast at least a little bit of doubt. But Adams is he's still a top tier player. There's he can still be a top five guy, but I have him outside of that because there's other guys that I just believe a little bit more will be in that range. Yeah, I mean you have to make the decision whether you want to go for youth and athleticism and and future upside versus the known commodity with variables. Because, unfortunately, there are variables here. You lost Darren Waller. You bring in Jacoby Myers. You get the change of quarterback. And, honestly, this is a player in Devontae Adams that could change drastically at, during the NFL draft. You know, the, the Raiders have still been tied to trade-up rumors for Levis or Anthony Richardson. You know, if they end up with a first-round quarterback, I would expect Jimmy G to play half the season and then the other quarterback to come in, and I will certainly lower – uh, Devontae Adams in, in that regards, but he is, I mean, what you saw last year was still domination. He had six games where he was a top three weekly wide receiver. I mean, he's just a weak winner six times. So the talent's there and you know, he's not going to be a bad wide receiver. There's nothing on film uh, to say that, you know, he's, he's lost the step. Uh, let's talk to the, let's talk about the, the most discontent man in football for some reason. <laughs> Always. Um, Let's go with Stephon Diggs here. 154 targets. He's fueled by his rage. Coming in at number six. You know, didn't show up to the offseason program. You know, this is a player that's gotten 166, 165, 154 targets in three straight years, finishing mm. at three, seven, and four. I heard a down 
uh, downtrend. Oh, because the the targets. I were, mean, who went from one sixty six down to one sixty five yeah, down mean, to one fifty four? I, I I'm just trying to figure out why he's mad. He was really angry that when the be. season ended. Um, sideline yelling at Josh Allen and things like that. Uh, but as a fantasy player, he's kind of automatic right now. Like yes. if he's playing for the Buffalo Bills, he is an automatic production machine. You can't go a game as the Buffalo offense without heavy involvement from Stephon Diggs. You have fourth in red zone targets, third in yards per route run, third in receptions. Uh, he's he's still that dude, or as he would declare on the sidelines, I am him. Uh, ah. He loves to tell people that he is him. Uh, the question, uh, like, my only question here for Stephon Diggs, and this is just what gets into speculation, is what happens if DeAndre Hopkins goes to the Buffalo Bills? Because that seems to be one of the loudest uh, pieces of noise out there in the media of teams that could that could trade for DeAndre Hopkins. He's one of the uh, – Hopkins wants to go to the Buffalo Bills. He's made that known publicly. Would you still be confident in this ranking of Stephon oh, Diggs? No. no, no. I mean, that, okay. would, that would destroy – and it, it wouldn't make for a bad season from Diggs or Hopkins, but it would certainly take, you know, the, the top five upside of either one out because, you know – the defenses are going to do different things in different yeah, games, you, and you're going to have one of the things that's you're great taking about Lamb over Diggs. If, if it, yeah, Hopkins went there, ooh, well, uh, I would say a, a handful spicy. of these guys we've talked about. If Hopkins was there, you know, I would see Diggs as a top ten wide receiver. But the the guys with that high top three range of outcomes, I would still draft over them because pretty much everyone we're talking on today's show is relatively safe. Uh, so I'm looking for the ceiling case. Um, the safety is the key thing for Stephon Diggs, you don't get more consistent. 76.5% of his games hit our threshold uh, in his last 17 games played of, of being a really good wide receiver week. So he's just week in, week out, very, very solid. I don't expect Hopkins to be there, and I, I don't have him ranked right now like Hopkins were, were going there. But if he did, certainly it would it would change his outlook. All right, let's move on to a player that's been in the top 12 two of the last three years. Injury is the only thing that seems to slow him down. A.J. Brown, number five on the early ranks. I got him up at three. Jason at six, Mike at six. Finished at wide receiver five last year. Um, he is the alpha of a dynamic offense. You know what you're going to get. He is too physically dominant to be stopped by opposing defenses. He always seems to get his. Led the NFL in receiving yards on vertical routes, fourth in air yards, fourth in air yards per target. Jalen Hurts ain't afraid to throw that ball up. That's, I mean, <laughs> that's the, the, the truth of the Eagles just last nothing year. nothing that's going to go wrong for A.J. Brown short of injury. Uh, right. He, he is he's too good. This is a player who was a top a 12 wide receiver when he had 106 targets that's it well last year he went up to 146 now he's actually able to be a volume wide receiver based on that kind of target number and then he's still getting the ball downfield he's obviously very young he's physically stronger and bigger than all of these dbs out there he plays for a great offense the only issue here is kind of do you worry about the you know is it, what if could he become the number two in the target order? And I think he very well could, just from a stylistic difference between him and Devontae Smith. And then would that would that hurt him he, much? This is one of the teams that I have taken a deeper dive on so far with the ultimate draft kit uh, projections that we're working on. And, and it was just kind of eye-opening to me to look at Jalen Hurts' season and to see the different forms of potential that exist for Jalen Hurts. Do you remember off the top of your head how many passing touchdowns Jalen Hurts had last year? It's sub-30. Mike? Yeah, it was low 20s. 22? Yeah. 11 of the 22 were A.J. Brown. Like, there is passing game upside. I think Jalen Hurts had 13 or 14 rushing touchdowns. So, as this offense develops, they do have a new offensive coordinator. There is, there's 15, 16 touchdown upside in A.J. Brown's range of outcomes not saying it's a it's what I would bet on but I just think that you know the way that they've made the commitment to Jalen Hurts AJ Brown's going to be the guy for several years there and we're going to talk about him on the show every year yeah because he's great Tyreek Mike talk to me about Tyreek Hill what you expect from him 170 targets 
He comes in at four here. He was the wide receiver two last year. Every bit of concern and doubt in the offseason was foolishness yes. from mm -hmm. the fantasy community. He is yeah, that guilty. guy, that good. And I made we had talked about his little retirement pronouncement on the show. I think I had made the misstatement that he had two years left, but he said he'd be there till the end of twenty five, which would be three more seasons, which if you can give me three more yeah, seasons of Tyreek, I don't need any more than that. That's an eternity. Yep. Uh, about 120 receptions, 1,700 yards, seven touchdowns, led all wide receivers in yards per route run at 3.2. 3.2 yards per route run uh, is outrageous. Like that, that is a truly ridiculous number and still fast. And this was the uh, just another example of, in recent history, I should say, another example of the craziness of the NFL of us seeing – True number one wide receivers, changing teams, and and it working out just fine. The the Mike McDaniel system, it, like it's based off of the Shanahan tree. You know it's going to put up numbers. So I just I have no concerns here with with Tyree Kill. I would take him in the first round. Probably take him pretty early in the first round too. Does he stop you from drafting Waddle if you get him early? Uh, it's not my preference to spend. Uh, uh, where do you, where is Waddle going? Right Waddle now? probably will, like third round, maybe. Uh, uh he's going best about ball ADP wide is wide receiver eleven. Yeah, so that'll be two three turn ish. Yeah, it's it's not my preferred uh way to use my draft capital. Two early picks because the uh, there is a good chance that both of them finish as top twelve guys, but you're not going to have like you don't have a a a way to hit the number one and the number two wide receiver if you go that route. So it would be picking between them. I and I would strongly prefer a first on Tyreek over maybe a two three turn value on Waddle. Yeah, because the two three turn value on Waddle that that is a slight value, but it's it's not some outrageous. Like we were right. talking about DK Metcalf versus Tyler Lockett. If Tyler Lockett's in the seventh round, that's an absurd value. Uh, Jalen Waddle is in the is is going where he should be going, and maybe he can outproduce that. But you aren't going to do what Tyreek Hill can do if Tyreek Hill is on the field because Tyreek Hill had 170 targets. And when you've got that speed and that yards per route run and that many targets, it's just a guarantee that you're great. He had half of his games were over double-digit targets. Like, there's nothing not to love here. Jamar Chase put together a wide receiver 12 season last year in just 12 games. Impressive. He's the wide receiver three on our early rankings here. I've got him at two, Jason at three, Mike at four. I mean, when you get to the top of these rankings, it feels a little bit silly to tell you, the listener, that they're good at football. Yeah. So let's try. Let's talk about how bad he is. How, yeah, let's talk about his weaknesses. Let's start with his hips. I, I, th I think he's got his, weak hips. I think well, his biggest... that's why he missed some games, Mike. Right. Well, but now it's stronger then. Yeah. Oh, did he get like a bionic? No, no. It's just it like you, when you. Well, I should have gone bionic. Your bones get stronger when they yeah. when you heal. You didn't know that. I didn't. I didn't. It's know one that. of the reasons I break my bones on purpose. Yes, interesting. We all do that. Yeah, around just here. over over the off season, it was just shin bone. Yeah. Because why do you think time, I'm so good at pickleball? I got real strong bones. He has broken his legs twenty five times. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's but you I'm, like. But we're saying he's done breaking his legs. No, he'll never be done. Oh, okay. No. So then I'm a little worried. Put again. in the work. <laughs> um. Number one in, in uh, expected fantasy points per game. Targeted on 24.5% of his routes. Everything that Jamar Chase brings to your fantasy team is is so valuable because he has weak winning game-breaking performances, but he has stability. He has red zone. We we know how solid he is. You got a, you know, a connection with Joe Burrow that will last many, many years. Would have finished much higher. Uh, his best ball ADP is wide receiver too, so no one's holding him, holding it against him. No, I mean there, there's there's nothing bad to say. He's obviously he's 23 years old. He's only going to continue getting better if he plays a full season. He obviously can finish as the wide receiver one. Yep. Personally, I like the other two players that are ahead of him. More than Jamar Chase, or uh, obviously he's the only one player, Justin Jefferson, is ahead of him in ADP, but there are two players I like more than Jamar Chase solely based upon guaranteed volume, just outrageous outpourings, complete ownership of the market. Here you've got 
a quarterback that can spread the ball around and weapons that allow that. Yeah, you, you had a stretch to start last year where Jamar Chase wasn't a top 25 wide receiver for a month. Uh, wide receiver 45, 41, 28, 38. And then he jumps back up, you know, back to back weeks of number one. But I, I, I agree with Jason of uh, very, very happy to have Jamar Chase as, as my number one pick. We'll draft him in the first round. But I, I think that the, the volume is just a little safer on a week-to-week -week basis with the other two guys. Yeah, uh, the volatility of Chase is so much fun when you have him and he does well because it's like when he has his game, you go, oh, I win. <laughs> it does, right. doesn't matter yeah, yeah, how the rest yeah. of your team did. But if you look at his consistency score for being the number two ADP wide receiver, he's actually got a B from us, and that does not include his – missed games this is a rolling 17 game log of his last games played where he is on average you know getting above that benchmark that we say is a good wide receiver game 58.8 percent of the time and if I'm taking that that pick with the number one two or three wide receiver I would prefer to have a more consistent asset number two Cooper Cup I got him at four Jason at one Mike at two and I don't have any problem with that number one overall ranking. I mean, it's until he doesn't do what he's done with Matthew Stafford, right. it's totally justifiable to keep him there. He is a game breaker. He's always open. He's, he does some sort of cheating, I guess, on the field to something to not be covered or to always be open towards the end of a play, no matter how much the defense focuses on him. Yeah, I mean, he's outrageous, and you, I think because of what happened both to the Rams and to Cooper Cup last season, add in his age, people are going to fall a little bit. They're going to say, I don't want you know to be holding the, the age bag when it comes. He was injured at the end of last season, so I'll take the young studs, and I don't blame them for that. That's, that's a, a correct mentality most of the time, but Cooper Cup is not a good wide receiver. He isn't a solid fantasy asset. He was the number one by a huge, ginormous gap two years ago when he had 1,900 yards and 16 receiving touchdowns every week, an absolute dominator. And then what he did last year was better. He was outrageous every single week. The entire season he played was unstoppable. And then he got injured. And it wasn't a huge injury it wasn't an ACL tear it wasn't something that was he could have come have back to do the, the, the tight, tight rope, rope surgery yeah he had the tight rope surgery he could have come back last year but they're like why would we yeah why would we so he's fully healthy he hasn't aged out he hasn't been anything but dominant so I get it if you want to go young want to want to worry about the injury that's fine but for me if this is redraft obviously not in a keeper or a dynasty but in a redraft league he's my number one until he's not outclassing the world I think the his injury I'm not concerned about Matthew Stafford I am a little bit more concerned about of he didn't finish the season last year he's had these chronic back problems now for multiple years he's 35 there was you know whispers of retirement I still think that is not a zero percent chance that Matthew Stafford ends up retiring before this season he could get into training camp and go oh no I don't want to do that again to my back seems like the odds are that he will play but that's going to be that's going to be hanging over over it's going to be a cloud over Cooper Cup's fantasy value of did they like do the Rams manage to fix their offensive line cuz they need to protect Matthew Stafford if he's getting beat up like he was last year you're probably looking at some some more missed games for the franchise quarterback and that becomes a big problem for Cooper Cup Kyle do you know off the top of your head what the win total is right now for the Rams I think it was at seven and a half. Ooh, yeah, I mean that, that. Take the under. That's one <laughs> of those things where it's a tough one because I don't think they're going to have a great offense. I don't think they're going to have a great defense. I think their coach flirted with retirement. They did uh, addition by subtraction. Um, Got rid of a Rob. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. yeah, and so you're in this situation where you don't necessarily believe in the team, but they were a bad team last year. And he still had the production. So uh, will the recipe really change? Probably not. Do they have to go find somebody else now? I mean, it, it didn't work. You know, Beckham didn't come back. And then A-Rob wasn't the answer on the other side. And Robert Woods is gone. And 
Like there has to be some pass catching solutions outside of Cooper Cup. Yeah, there 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 are clear worries, right? Big variables. I think Matthew Stafford, you're right to bring him up as that would be a deal breaker. You know, mo that that stretch where he was great. He did have Matthew Stafford. They kind of left the season at the same time, and they're like, yeah, let's pack this up. We suck. <laughs> um, so there are concerns, but just to illustrate, before he went out in week nine, Cooper Cup was averaging 20.3 fantasy points per game on a half PPR. Justin Jefferson was at 18.1, Jamar Chase at 16.9. So, I mean, he was the number one. So that's kind of what you're getting if you want to take the risk that there will be a healthy season for the Rams. Justin Jefferson at number one, rounding out our top 10 countdown. Uh, he's at two for Jason behind Cup, and then Mike and I both have him at one. Sixth most receiving yards of all time? Last year, yeah. Last year, wow. Uh, 184 targets, 128 catches, 1,809 yards, eight touchdowns. Weren't we on watch for him to maybe break – Calvin's record there last couple the of weeks of the year I think we were looking at uh, yeah, what then, he needed to do and then he gave us 15 yards in and championship week at 38 after that so um you know he wasn't the only thing I'll say is he wasn't as consistent as you would think with those numbers correct 29 percent of his games he he actually busted according to our consistency metrics he was held under 50 yards seven times yeah that's not great uh and I don't like for that not to happen I I don't know if they have the other receiver. Oh, they're drafting. Yet. They're drafting somebody. Because KJ Osborne, you know, I don't think he'll be the guy for them. And Thielen's gone and wasn't the guy last year. So I think you do need that threat to bring that consistency into focus. And it, look, that could be a Cousins problem too. Mm -hmm. um, Cousins is just like sometimes he shows up and he installed the wrong software. I don't know why that happens, but – it's like he needs a reboot, and he doesn't get a chance to do it. He needs a solid 10 hours of sleep every single night. If he doesn't get the 10, he's a little, he's a little bit of grumpy. And his uh, he needs the and granola in the morning. Do you think Adam Thielen, who played a full season, did he open up enough things, even this version of Adam? Like, will that loss hurt Justin no. Jefferson at all? Because it, I agree with you. K.J. Osborne, he's always in the crowd, never the bridesmaid. Uh, as the as the that, saying goes, what? Well, like he hopes to be the bridesmaid. Oh, but he's just so he's just bouquet catcher, right? Exactly. He's not oh. even able to be the bridesmaid. Okay, so yeah. He's like yeah. just walking. I think, what, I think where it went wrong is like that makes sense. But when you said as the saying goes, <laughs> well, that was the joke because that's oh, not how okay. the saying goes. Oh, mm. I see. Boston. <laughs> <laughs> so, but my point is, these aren't I, things you can joke about because we don't know when the you know. I don't think he steps up enough, and there won't be a number two unless KJ Hawkinson. Osborne. Yeah, okay. unless Hawkinson um, is even better than he was at the end of last year. Do you think that that could hurt Justin Jefferson in any way, or is he just Not really. too good? You no. could double cover him, and he's still going to get open. Yeah, I think you might have the same level of inconsistency if you want to call it that for the best fantasy wideout. You you're going to have that, I think, until you have a whether it's a field stretcher coming out of the draft, whether it's somebody else that can be a threat in those um, situations, I not much is going wrong for Justin Man, Jefferson. Adam Thielen had 107 targets. Justin Jefferson might break 300 targets. <laughs> I would throw to him if I was his quarterback. Yeah, I would throw to him if I was his running back. Yeah. <laughs> I would get the ball and I'd go, go, go get open. It's good. It's good. Uh, ultimate draft kit. Go get it. UltimateDraftKit.com. Yes. Next week is the draft, the NFL draft, and we have Ultimate Draft Week coming. Yes, we do. So uh, That means we have some big announcements coming next week. Is that where we'll leave it? Yes. Big, big announcements. Yes. Sometime soon. Next week. Next week. Yes. A smattering of horns. Hmm. I'll make sure they're all warmed all up. All the then. trumpeters will be <laughs> warmed up. I'll get my harmonica ready. Well. No. Well. Well, really, harmonica yeah. reference, huh? Have you uh, you given that a go before? <laughs> it's it's gonna be my first time. Oh yeah. What yeah. was what was the band? Blues Traveler. Blues Traveler. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Blues Traveler and Waterworld. <laughs> oh baby. I want Jason to be the first harmonica player that uh, you know the little like the neck. Yeah, so you can play you the guitar. It? What would you it's call just, it? Uh, like a holder a of some kind. It goes around your neck, and you, but so I want you can him Bob to be Dylan the, it. I want him to be the first one that wears that to play the harmonica but does not play another instrument. 
Oh, he, he only, just see he, but he no hands it. He no hands. <laughs> and he does a no hand harmonica. I love that idea. And, I need and, to be able and to does dance. Some, he kind of does some dancing with it. Yeah. Um. There. You know. You'd make dozens on the as a street performer doing that <laughs> for sure over a couple months. Yeah. I want that to be the way you celebrate your B. John Robinson pick. You know. I'll bring a harmonica to yeah. the draft party. That'll do it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in, listening, supporting. It's been fun. The yes. draft is coming. Thanks, Deucers. See you next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.